Hey guys, I'm about to interview one of my students and friend. His name is Robert. Funny story about Robert is I actually used to work with him on my old job, which was at Yellow Pages. And when I first started Amazon at BA, he kind of started hearing this Amazon thing and then kind of started learning about it. And then he approached me, he's like, hey, like, what are you doing on Amazon, so on and so forth. So I uh, helped him out at the very beginning and he's a very quick learner. He was able to scale his Amazon FBA store from zero to 100. 3,130, 103, I forget. Really cool story because his first product actually failed. In this interview, we're gonna learn about what that product is, why he failed at it, how did he recover from that failure, and how he was ultimately to go from zero to you know over $100,000 per month in revenue. So sit back, relax. This is gonna be a really good episode and I'll see you guys in just two seconds. Welcome to the show, Robert. How are you doing today? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's a pretty nasty day out here in Vancouver, yeah. just like the usual. Yeah. But we're going to be talking about some exciting stuff, how you hit $130,000 per month in revenue, right. which is uh, an amazing accomplishment considering the fact that you only have three products at the moment. Three, yeah. Three, three. products. Thank you. So let's, let's, let's take this all the way back to... Um, you know, the first segment of this interview, I just wanted you to get right. share a little bit of a story of who you are, what you did before this Amazon thing came into your life. How did you discover Amazon and so on and so forth? And then we can talk about the nitty gritty of Amazon FBA. How do you build your, you have a very funny first product story where you yeah. failed at it. So we'll talk about that failure and what the product was. And then we can talk a little bit about what you learned from it and then how you ramped it up. And then at the end, we can just, you know, chit chat and maybe answer some general questions that some of the Instagram followers that I have okay. for you because I, sure. I, I made a post yesterday about it. So Robert, why don't you spend about you know a couple minutes just yeah. talking to us about what did you do before Amazon? How did you discover it? Um, yeah, and for then, sure. Yeah. So yeah, what, what I was doing before Amazon is working at a place called uh, a place called Yellow Pages. I'm that's a place where I met you at, right? Yeah. How I discovered Amazon was through talking to a few friends that was working at Yellow Pages, and then I realized that you started doing Amazon. So then I started talking to you and getting more in depth with Amazon. Uh, and, then and this is in like 2007, 16, 17? No, 2017. No, 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 late 2017, I think. Yeah, late 2017. Yeah. It was in October of 2017. Right, okay. Yeah, and that's when I started reaching out to you because I knew you were doing something on Amazon. I knew you were, uh, your store was starting to take off a bit, right? Right. So reached out to you and then got more in depth with it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how I got started with Amazon, and then now here we are. So what? Thirty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you what did you do before um, Yellow Pages? Oh, before Yellow Pages, yeah. So what I was doing before Yellow Pages, I went to school at BCIT. Okay. I think you actually went there as well. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Took, I didn't know you went to school. Yeah, I went to school at BCIT, and then I took a program called Operations Management. It wasn't really something I wanted to do. It was more so, you know, Asian parents they want me to, you know, go to school, finish it. So I picked BCIT just because it's like you know fastest place and. In BC to get your your your, cert, your certifications, right? So, took that for two years. I started working at a a company called Container World. Um, I did that for a little bit, and you know, figured that wasn't really what I wanted to do. So, you know, that's why I started looking elsewhere and got into sales and got into yellow page, and that's what, you know how I met you and started Amazon. Have have you had like a entrepreneurial drive uh, in your life, or like did you have a feeling that one day you're gonna own your business? Did you have the desire to do that, or was it just kind of like Amazon came into the world and you were just like, I want to do something more? Oh, yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea. So, you know, what, how I got into Amazon is just because simply because I wanted to make, be, you know, making more money and have a better, a better lifestyle and not, you know, not having the nine to five waking up, you know, going to work for someone. So that's pretty much how I got but, started. But you were making pretty good money at Yellow Pages, though. You were probably making like close to six figures, if not over. Yes. Uh, yeah. A little over six figures. Right. So even when you were making that much money for someone like you who were mm -hmm. you pretty young at the time, how old were you when you were making? I was 21. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're 21 years old, making over six figures. Yeah, um, a lot of 21 year olds will just be like, "I'm just, mm -hmm. I, I'm killing it. I'm on top of the world." Uh, and and you know, earlier I interviewed my friend Dan, and he mm -hmm. was also making a lot of money as well. But mm -hmm. what separates between you and him is the fact that you're like, "I need something more," whereas for him, he's like, "That's enough," right? Yeah. So wh what do you feel like it was the drive for you to seek something more? It was more so for the freedom. Mm. Right. And then not having to work for someone as well as pretty much is a better lifestyle. Right. And I want to have a lifestyle where I can control that. I don't have to wake up to go work for someone, you know, you know, every, you know, every day of the week. Right. Mm. So that's pretty much one of my main drivers. And just 
having a better lifestyle. Right. Yeah. So so let's let's get into Amazon a little bit. Yeah. Um, you you discovered Amazon October 2017. Right. Uh, how long did it take to launch your first product? October, I launched it in December. I still remember exactly. It was December 26th of 2017. <laughs> Everybody remember. Like, <laughs> earlier, Dan was like, like earlier, Dan was like, yeah, I got my first sale July 25th of 2019. Everybody remember their first day. Yeah, yeah, their first. Okay, so so talk to us about, and, and, and we want to kind of uh, talk a little bit about your first product because it was, okay. uh, I mean, it wasn't like, I wouldn't consider it like a failure. It was just like, it just yes. didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So the product itself, maybe you can share the story oh, about sure. how you found it. Why did you choose it? What was that experience like with your very first product? And how much money did you invest into yeah, yeah, the first product? Sure. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so yeah, the, my first product, I don't mind talking about it. It's a, it's a uh, spy camera. <laughs> um, so yeah, the reason why- I It's like, for, for those that don't know, it's like, um, it, it comes in, it, what, what was the shape? It was like an HTML. Um, oh no, it looks exactly like an iPhone uh, a wall plug. Okay, well, so iPhone wall plug that has a camera that records sound and stuff like that. Yeah, records sounds, records. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that video. Okay, so how did you yeah. find that niche? Yeah, so yeah, how I found that niche is I, I've been looking at a lot of YouTube videos about product research. Mm -hmm. Um, it's you know there's a specific criteria that you're supposed to follow. You know, low reviews, good high demand, reven yeah. high revenue, small, small, lightweight. Yeah. So that's pretty much why I picked it because at that time the revenue made sense to me and the, you know reviews, right? I didn't really pay too much attention about if it's electronics or not. Yeah. I, you know, to me as as long as it has good revenue and it's selling well, I'm gonna sell it. Right. So that's how I, how I got into that product. Um, that product it was. I mean, it wasn't a bad product. I was still made money on it. How much were you making? Uh, I was making about four or five thousand dollars in revenue and uh, profit. How much revenue were you making? In revenue wise, I was making about twenty, thirty thousand. Okay. On, depending on the month, right? So you thought it was pretty good. I mean, it's your first product. You're like, holy shit, I'm making twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Like, this yeah. is my first time go at it. Like, mm -hmm. you must be on the moon. Yeah, I, I thought it was good until I started getting a lot of um, returns. Mm. Well, I mean, even with the return, I was still making $45,000 a month from it, right? So that's why in profit. So that's why I just kept continue selling it. Mm. But that product, it wasn't necessarily a failure. I think it was a very good learning curve. And mm. it's just because I was making money and then there was so many issues that came up with it that I learned how to deal with a lot of issues at the same time. What were some of the issues? Yeah, Other so, than returns, what else? Uh, yeah, returns was one. Negative reviews one because people not knowing how to use it, you know, avoid anything that has software or you know, on an, I, I just tell people much. anything with an on and off button, you should be very, very careful. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's a big issue. And then another one would be, yeah, just simply people not really understanding how to, you know, use it. how to use it. Yeah. yeah. And then they just come back and leave a negative reboot. They don't even bother reaching out to you. Right. 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 So with that, with that experience, um, you know, I learned a lot how to deal with, you know, customers, um, you know, how to, you know, pretty much deal with customers, how to deal with. I also got a uh, trademark infringement with it, how to deal with that, how to overcome that, as well as um, it taught me a lot, such as uh, inventory planning as well, right? Mm -hmm. How to stay in stock, how Amazon works as well. How, how much money did you start? Uh, oh, right. How, how much How much initial capital did you put in the business? Yeah, initial capital I put in, uh, yeah, I put in about $10,000 to start. 10, Canadian? 000, uh, US, US. US, okay. Yeah. Okay, and that was enough to get your first batch out the door and stuff like that. Yeah, that was enough to get my first batch out the door. Okay, so, so I mean, I'm just trying to think because like my first product made me like six thousand dollars a month, which was kind of cool. But like twenty thousand, thirty thousand, going back, I'm like, if I made that much money for my first product, my first like go at it, I would just be like, this is this is like I hit a gold mine, right? Yeah. Like, how are you feeling in the time? I know you're getting a lot of returns, which is kind of sucked. But you said you're still netting about four to five k per month, which is great. Yeah. Um. A, great additional revenue that oh, you're generating sure, yeah, yeah. where you're just like pretty happy you're like i'm gonna go all in on this now what was your plan at that time yeah my plan during that time i thought you know i thought i was on top of the world i thought i can just you know just quit my job just do whatever i want right yeah. until you know the until more infringement and more trademark issues starts happening and mm -hmm. that's when i started realizing i have you know I have, in order to scale you need a quality product mm -hmm. that don't get a lot of negative reviews mm -hmm that can actually scale and it's easy for people to use, right? Mm. If you're actually looking to build an actual business. Like a sustainable business. Yeah, a sustainable yeah. Not business. Not just make like five grand a month, like fast for three months and then that's that. Yeah, exactly. That's why I realized during that time, right? And then I started looking elsewhere for different types of products that were more low tech and easier to use. Mm. And then 
now yeah here, here we are now okay so talk maybe talk to us a little bit about um yeah like talk to us more about you know your first product so did you stop selling the product as a whole or like how, how did you run out of inventory or what happened there or amazon blocked you from selling the product because of the infringement yeah 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 so amazon actually blocked me from selling the part product from the infringement but i was lucky because during that time i was already you know close to running out of inventory probably only have like 20 30 pieces left oh nice so yeah th that was i was lucky for that and then eventually amazon blocked me for a trademark infringement there there's a uh i know with spy cameras you're you, you're technically allowed to sell a spy camera that records videos but you're not allowed to sell a spy camera that records audio it's specifically said on amazon's um restricted right. products so yeah. you got an infringement what what was the infringement like what trade what trade were you infringing on someone's trademark pan or what was it yeah no that was actually on a trademark Oh yeah, someone reported me that you know that the you know the design of the the design of the charger was exactly the same as Apple's. Oh. So I got pulled for that, and oh. then later on I got another infringement was for you know pretty much what you're talking about the audio recording. Oh. You're not allowed to record audio right. in some parts of the state, so they ended up blocking my entire listing. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. That makes a little bit of sense. Okay, so now for that ten thousand dollars, did that turn into a little bit more? Did you lose it all? Did you get some? Was it even? Or how much money like did you have in your business after this whole thing is said and done? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So after that, after everything is said and done, I had about twenty, about twenty five, thirty thousand dollars. Oh wow! So like tripled your money. Yeah, because I I ended up selling that item for about five to six months. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Five to six months. And then with that, I invested that into my other products, which is the one I'm still selling right now. Got it. Got it. So maybe talk to us a little bit about how you went about finding your next products. Cause the first one is like no more electronics. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, for sure. I'm sure that, you, that that was the first criteria, yeah. but um, for those who are listening right now, you know, finding on finding a product on Amazon is very important. There's a lot of products that can't be sold on Amazon. There's a lot of products that you shouldn't sell on Amazon, and there's a lot of products that will do okay, and there's a lot of products that will do well. Yeah. So when you look for a product on Amazon to sell, what are some of the criteria that you look for? Um, um, that uh, for sure. That. Yeah. So the criteria I look for is first of all sales depth, right? Which you go over in your in your mastery course really well so pretty much just understanding the market and how well it sells on the first and second page theoretically if the item is still selling well on the second page even if i land on the second page theoretically i should still be selling well given that you know my review is good given that my images are good as well right, right. and then what i look for is I, w I wouldn't necessarily aim for the lowest reviews the reason why i'm saying that is just because a lot of people who's coming on to to Amazon, right? They're aiming for, you know, lowest reviews, highest revenue, right? So I try to differentiate myself. I look for something that's just slightly above, uh, about 150, 200 reviews, right? That way, you know, I can, that way I can still be targeting items that not a lot of uh, new sellers are targeting. Mm -hmm. And then what I uh, do after that is I pretty much just take about an hour to just understanding the market. Mm -hmm. What I like to do is I like to op click on the listings that's doing well and really study and understand it. Why is it doing well? Is mm. it is it the photos? Is it the is it just ranking or is it offering? Whatever. Exactly, right? Mm. So once I understand the good ones, right? I like to open the 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 mid-sized revenues one. Right? What what I mean by mid-sized revenue is the one that's doing average on the first page, right? Mm. And then I study that as well. Is there and then I, I compare that with the one that's doing well. Is mm. there a difference? And then I do that with the ones that's doing very very uh, low revenue or the bad selling listings on the first page and I start seeing patterns once I start st really studying and understanding the market. So what are some of the patterns that you see? What are some of the common patterns? Is it photos or title, price, or what is it? Yeah. So depending on the, the on the item, right? Some some listings or some markets I realize it sometimes is just simply the reviews, right? But majority of the time what I notice is just it's a lot of time is the photos, right? The listing that's not doing as well, they have pretty much just black and white photos, just a product on a white background, even with the, they don't even have any lifestyle images, right? No mm -hmm. infographics. That's the first thing I realized. And the second thing I realized is the listing is not built out well. What I mean by that, the bullet points aren't filled out well, there's no product description, and the, the, the uh, title is just very vague, right? That's the second point. 
And then the third point is just simply because the reviews, right? Reviews are either like three and a half star or four star, right? Mm -hmm. And then usually the one that's doing a lot better are either the four and a half or five stars. So like the quality of the review. Yeah, the right. quality of the reviews. Yeah, the I mean, that's, I mean, guys, that, that's like really the review, especially the review part, right? Like mm -hmm. some of my students ask me, hey, like I got two reviews, like how my sales are not coming in. I'm like, yeah. put yourself in the customer's shoe. Like if your product has two reviews, everybody else has 200, like which one are customers more okay, likely exactly. to buy, right? Yeah. So, okay, that's awesome. Awesome, man. So that's really good insight. So studying your competitors, uh, understanding the pattern, and then obviously not only understanding it, but using it, leveraging it to your benefit. So that right. your photos are amazing, your title is great, your price is good, you know how many reviews you need to get, so on and so forth. Right. Cool. So you found that product. Let's talk a little bit about maybe sourcing, right? Because yeah. that's the next step. Um, how do you go about finding manufacturers? What do you say to them? Do you negotiate with them a lot? How do you grind them down? So oh, on for and so sure. forth. Yeah. So how I find my suppliers is I go through a lot of sources. Uh, I do go through Alibaba. Alibaba, uh, there's a Chinese site called 1688.com. I also go through sourcing agents as well. And then what I like to do is I like to contact about 15 to 20 suppliers and then really just getting a quote. And then what I do after that, what after I get the quote, right, for the specific product I'm looking for, what I do is just go around the 15 suppliers or 15 or 20 that I was speaking to and ask them, hey, is there a better price you can do on this, this? Mm -hmm. And then once a, once a supplier gives me a good price, I'll take that price and I'll go back around again. <laughs> so I get the lower price, right? Right. And then what I do sometimes as well is, you know, I just, because usually with these Chinese supplies, they send you a Excel spreadsheet, right? Mm. So what I do sometimes, I just change the price <laughs> to what I want it to be. Yeah. And they go back around and asking them, hey, can you do a better price than this, right? And, you know, obviously I'll, I'm, I'm going to crop out the company name as well, right? I'm just right. going to show them a spreadsheet and ask, hey, I got the quote for, for this, right? Here's a photo of the spreadsheet. Hopefully, uh, hopefully your suppliers not listening to this right now. But uh, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. So pretty much that's how I get the the best price as well. And then you know, price isn't everything. What I realized, you know, mm. through through my journey so far, mm. what's more important is the quality, especially when you're looking to scale. Right? Just because of an item is cheap doesn't mean the quality is good. Right? So what's more important if you're actually looking to scale and actually make looking to to build your business up? it's more important to have a quality item than a cheap item. Absolutely. Because yeah. you don't want the, the, the worst thing that you can possibly get on Amazon is negative reviews. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's just, you can't get rid of it. Like, mm -hmm. you literally cannot get rid of it. Amazon will not remove it and no one's going to buy a product with shitty reviews. That's just, exactly, the, that's yeah. just the reality. Okay. Yeah. So you look for those things, you get some samples, I assume too, you compare it to samples. Right. And then you just go with which, whichever one's cheaper, but also with good quality. Um, and then you send the money, go to production, ship everything to Amazon, and then you start ranking. Yeah. So can you talk to us a little bit about um, how you rank on Amazon? Oh, how do you yeah. get your product from like page 100 to top of page one? Yeah, so what, what I do right now is I do pretty much many chat, right? I do, uh, you know, pretty much I do two, two steps, right? Plus PPC. So I'm gonna start with PPC. How, what I do with PPC is I just, uh, for all, I'm gonna take a step back. First, what I do is I understand the market first, understand the keyword, the search term volume. And then what I'll do is I'll research into the search term and really understand the market, which which market will easy will be easier for me to differentiate and easier to rank, right? Based on the competition and based on the pricing, right? And then once I find the keyword that I want to rank for, what I do is I run, first of all, I turn on PPC, right? Which is, you know, Amazon PPC. I would target the exact uh, word the exact word phrase, right? So that's what that's what I do. How much do you spend a day? What's your budget? What's your bid? Like high bid, high budget, or what? Yeah, so I, just... I do a high bid, high budget, right? Okay. It doesn't really make sense at first, but after once you start ranking, you start seeing, you know, you start seeing the or the sales start happening, right? Organic sales because you, you start going up in uh, ranking. Mm. But what I do is I just put a high price, I put a high uh, high budget with a high cost per click or high bid, right? And then what I do after is I do a many chat with a uh, with a Supreme URL. So, mm -hmm. Well, Supreme 2.0 URL, right? what they call it. There's a lot of URLs. On yeah, there. there's so many names. It's like yeah. So what I yeah. So what I do first then is I do you know phase one, which is just uh, ranking them to the to the second or third page. And then right, right when I get to the th second or third page with PPC and the URLs, what I do is I switch over to a, a method called search find by. So essentially, what it is is just directing traffic to Amazon themselves and then having them go look for your item, right? From page two or three. And then what will happen is once Amazon starts realizing, hey, this this product is being looked for by a lot of people, you know, they start bringing you to page one. 
right? So that's pretty much what I'm doing for ranking right now. Awesome. And that's been working well for you? Yeah, working very well. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. So um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, maybe your journey. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, you know, you find a product, you source it, you launch it, you scale it. That's really, I think, all there is to Amazon. Like if we can just cap, put everything into different buckets and different categories. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about looking back and reflecting on your journey so far. And we can talk a little bit about, you know, what you're planning to do. I, I actually, one thing I want to say is last year you said something. You said my goal is to do $100,000 a month. And earlier I heard you said I didn't think I was going to do it. But yeah. just because you said it, it happened to you. And I'm not here to say like, ooh, like if you say it, it will come to you, <laughs> yeah. any of that. But I truly, truly believe, and I've shared this with many other people before as well, it's I've said similar things. When I got kicked out of three universities and all that type of stuff, I said, um, with a huge chip on my shoulder, I said, I want to make $100,000 per year at a job. And I got rejected by 15 different jobs until I found Yellow Pages. Mm -hmm. But life works in such different ways and interesting ways because if I got a job in any of those 15 different companies, there's no way I would have made 100 because yeah. they were all capped, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Yellow Pages, you get paid min minimum wage, but, you know, Pavin made like a quarter million dollars. Oh, yeah. So I was like, hey, if you can do it, I can maybe do half of that, which is equivalent, which is more than 100. Yeah. And then after that, I said, I want to make 200. Uh, or I forget what the number was, like 400 or something like that. And I was like, yeah. I don't even know how I was going to make that, but I just said it and I just like put it out there. I was like, I'm going to do it. I said my intention yeah. and Amazon came to my life and I did it. And I just kept on saying these numbers and over a couple of years, like they would actually come true. Mm -hmm. And that's very similar to what you've done. You said, I want to make a hundred and you're like, yeah. I don't think I can do it, but mm -hmm. I did it anyway. So um, can you maybe share a little bit about that? Like, what, what was that like when you did hit 100? How did that feel? Um, mm -hmm. So on and so forth. Yeah, for, for sure. So pretty much what happened is, you know, I'm going to loop back to my spy camera, right? So what happened is I got that cut. Um, Amazon blocked my listing. I think it was November or December of 2018. So I just started looking for another product. And then on in December of, uh, sorry, in January of 2019, I set a goal to hit $100,000 per month in sales, right? by the end of the year. And then, you know what, I, I didn't really do the math correctly, it's just because, um, you know, I didn't take into consideration that Chinese New Year is gonna take about two, three weeks, right? So then there was a bit of downtime. Uh, you know, March March came around the corner, I still still didn't have an item up. So, you know, at that point I realized, hey, you know, I, I might not even, I'll be lucky if I even hit 50K a month by the year end, right? It's just because it's March, April's coming, I don't even have an item up. I started testing for samples in May and placed an order and got them in in about June. Yeah, about about mid June, I started getting the items in, and then there, I had two items, right? We're just doing about fifteen thousand, right? So that was in June. I didn't realize, you know, at, at that time I was thinking, hey, this actually might gonna be an impossible goal, hitting this hundred thousand dollars by the end of the year, and then literally in a matter of three months. So in from June to September, I got my third item in. Right. And then literally things just went flying. So what I mean by that is I went from $15,000 a month in sales to about $130,000 a month in sales in a matter of two, three months. Right. That's insane. Yeah, that, that was insane. I, or I was just like every day you were refreshing. You're like, oh, my God, 20, 30, 40, yeah. 50. It was like I, I was in a bit of disbelief, right? Just because <laughs> I didn't expect it to change that fast, mm -hmm. especially in a, in, in a span of like two, three months. Right. But yeah, literally in a span of two, three months, we went from $15,000 a month in sales to, you know, over $130,000 a month in sales, right? And then once I hit 100,000, right? I wasn't necessarily happy. The reason why I'm just, why I'm saying that is just because I sort of expected it after, after making a good, after having some good sales coming in with the third item, I sort of expected, hey, I'm probably gonna hit 100,000 by the, you know, by, by this time, right? And then, Eventually, what happened is I realized that hey, I actually didn't even set a goal, that, you know, not big enough. Because mm. once I hit a hundred, I realized, hey, crap, you know, I'm. And this is only August, and you know, I, I'm at a hundred thousand dollars already. What am I going to be doing for the next mm. four or five months of the year, right? Right. So I realized I hit two. I set too small of a goal. So you know, this year I'm setting myself with a larger goal. I'm trying to you know hit four hundred thousand dollars per month in sales, right, by the end of the year, right? Mm -hmm. And you know we'll we'll see where that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. That's that's a big goal. Yeah. And uh, I just recently hit that, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's like yeah. four hundred thousand dollars a yeah, month. Yeah. That's it's 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 a crap load of money. Awesome, man. Um, well, 
yeah i is there yeah i think that's it i mean i i every single time i talk to you you're like you're you're doing the work and you're like hungry you're driven and i'm yeah. sure that you believe in amazon and you're doubling down on it For and sure. you're gonna get to 400 000 it's just a matter of time so yeah, um time. yeah it's it's awesome what you've done and uh, i'm really looking forward to your journey um i always like to start off end the podcast with For sure. uh, where to interview with uh kind of a question it's like what type of things would you tell your younger self or what type of things would you tell others who haven't started their journey yet uh, who are maybe on the fence and 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 you know um because i have a course as well yeah. that you took and and you know i tell people like take this course invest in yourself yeah, learn the awesome. knowledge mm -hmm. and like go do it um what would you tell those type of people that are still on the fence right now and just like uh, i don't know well yeah well first i would definitely recommend them to invest in themselves first right and then really believing that you can actually make it because there's a lot of people i speak to they you know they have a lot of self or limiting beliefs i should say right what i would recommend is just to you know set a goal what you would like to do right by the end of the year and just believe in yourself and just go for it it's just because i see a lot of people who set goals with you know limiting beliefs right you're more capable than what you think you can actually do yeah and you know i, I truly believe that is just because what i've what i've seen so far right i didn't even you know if you asked me this half if you asked me this back in in, uh, in June of last year, right, I wouldn't even expect that I'd be here, you know, interviewing with you, right? Yeah, so. yeah. No, oh, it's awesome, man. Okay, great, awesome. So, Robert, thank you so much for coming on the show and the interview and the podcast and all that type of stuff. I'm really glad we got connected, and I'm looking forward to your journey this year. And when you hit four hundred thousand, we gotta come back and do another episode. For sure. Thank you so okay. much for having me. Awesome, buddy. Okay, so that's the end of this episode. Like I said, I hope you guys got a tons and tons of value from this. If you're listening to this on the podcast, please leave me a review. That would mean a lot to me on iTunes or Spotify. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up and leave a comment down below. And um, if you're watching this anywhere else, yeah, um, follow me on Instagram, okay? Tom.com.ig. And you can also follow me on YouTube at Tom Wang. So really, really, really good episode. Very, very informative. Thank you so much, Robert, again. And I will see all of you in the very next video or episode wherever you're watching. All right, thank you.